Hi, my name is Peace Hyde, and you're watching an exclusive interview with me, Peace Hyde, on Alora Supergirl TV. Don't miss out. And I'm a media entrepreneur. Um, I'm also a journalist, so I write for Forbes Africa and Forbes Woman Africa, um, and I cover the West African region, um, which is a beautiful experience. I also am a TV personality, so I have a TV show, which is a flagship show of Forbes TV called My Worst Day, where we interview the captains of industries and find out what it's like when they go through their most challenging day in business. Um, I'm also a founder and CEO of a Aim High Africa. Now, Aim High Africa is a NGO and it deals with education and entrepreneurship. It's been running now in Africa, predominantly Ghana, for the past three years. Um, and it's really, really an exciting establishment to build and be part of because we've launched nearly 500 businesses now um, in West Africa and we're looking to expand and do more in Nigeria. So I'm really excited. So I was born and bred in the UK um, where I've lived most of my life. Um, and when I relocated back to really embark on this new dream of a media career, it was extremely challenging. I wasn't sure really if I was doing the right thing, but I knew I had a really, really strong passion to do it. Um, so I decided that, you know, I'm going to say let God take the will and just give it a try. Um, I was really lucky because in Ghana, I managed to secure quite a lot of high profile entertainment um, opportunities, which really catapulted me into the mainstream um, limelight. Um, but my passion has always been writing. Um, and I'm very well known for my piece of peace blogs that I write in Ghana, which are basically inspirational motivation type of um, columns. Um, so I was really blessed when I got the opportunity to work for Forbes Africa as a journalist. One of the main things um, I would say though is a challenge is when I originally relocated, I relocated with the vision of being a media personality, loads of entertainment stuff, events, and I enjoyed it thoroughly when I did it in Ghana. But one of the things that I really realized was that sometimes when you're following your dream or you're following your vision, um, it changes. And you've got to be able to make peace with that and follow whatever it is that you feel that God has planned for your life. So one of the biggest challenges I always say whenever anyone asks me, how has the experience been for you and what has been the challenge um, relocating back to the continent and following a dream is that you have to be open to change and you have to be open to adapting your mindset to whatever you're going to face. Um, so whether it's just you know normal amenity, things like the light offs and um, transport or things, or even language barriers within reason, um, you've got to be able to be willing to adjust, take the ball by the horns and really give it your best shot. Um, but I always like to emphasize to trust the process. Um, your greatest vision is sometimes a really tiny idea of what God has in store for you. So you've got to be able to have faith, be willing to put in a lot of hard work. Um, and I can never really say I have one challenge because there's always a million and one things I'm always unhappy about in some way, shape or form, just because life isn't perfect. But one thing I will say is throughout every experience I've had, I've had the opportunity to learn, to grow um, and to be better. And that's what I would say is really the highlight of the journey so far. It's the ability to adapt and grow in this process. And um, well, I've always been an avid reader of the Forbes magazine. So growing up, I was inspired by so many entrepreneurial stories that they covered. And I've always been in love with the brand of Forbes and what it represents. Um, for me, it represents that anything is possible because you have stories from the most established entrepreneurs and you have the startup stories, but either ones are it's so inspiring. So when I decided that I wanted to get qualified and start actually writing as a journalist, um, I'd been working in the media space for about a year. Um, and I had a lot of different experiences that made me very interested and intrigued by how the whole entire um, media industry really worked. Um, I had just completed a master's in digital communication and marketing and IT and I thought, you know, I love this. I enjoyed the course. I enjoyed the fact that I'm now, you know, I'm a master's graduate, but I didn't feel like I had a full understanding still of what I was trying to get my head around, which was my experience within the media space. Um, so I thought, you know what, I want to look at how people write these articles. I want to look at how that whole that whole side of writing um, and being able to create content worked. And I thought, let me go into journalism. Um, I then embarked on a master's in journalism. So part of my course requirement was that you needed to write for a publication. And I'm a firm believer of, if you're gonna dream, dream big. Otherwise, there's no point in dreaming. So um, I decided to go for 
the creme de la creme, I thought. And I thought, I'm going to apply to write for Forbes. Um, originally, they were very dismissive and they were like, no, we're okay, we have enough contributors. Um, and then I looked at the product and I thought, okay, this opportunity is not going to just fall in my lap. Let me see if I can find a gap in the market. Let me see if I can find a need that I can satisfy. So I noticed in the publication that they don't really cover content from Ghana. They cover West Africa very well, but Ghanaian content was not very frequently covered. So I thought, okay, let me do some stories about Ghanaian entrepreneurs that I'm inspired by, um, submit them and see what happens. Um, so I gave it a try. Um, and initially, you know, they, I didn't really get much feedback. Um, and then I started covering more and more content until they said, oh, this is actually really good. Who's this girl that keeps on sending us this stuff? Um, and I was really lucky to then be called in. Um, I had an interview. I wrote some more pieces for them. Um, and they gave me the job. But my job was limited to Ghana. So I'd be writing content for Ghana. No more, no less. Um, and I was really lucky because that was like the last time they were taking contributors for ages. And I didn't know this. So um, when I started writing, I submitted my piece. Um, it got published. And... I guess the rest is history. I'm here now, right? So um, yeah, it's been a very exciting journey. Um, the West African correspondent position was very different to me starting to write for Forbes. I was just really blessed. Um, I'd had a really bad accident in Ghana. And as a result, they wanted someone to cover that accident. I was in hospital, but I'm extremely stubborn and very, very driven. So I thought, you know, I don't care if I'm in my hospital bed. I'm going to write this. Um, so I wrote a first-hand account of what had happened to me. Um, and I was very lucky. They published it, and they were like, they liked the piece. At the time, the lady in my position had resigned. So she, I was like, what? They contacted me, and they're saying, peace, you know, are you interested in this opportunity? I was nervous. I was worried. Um, but I feel that there's no opportunity that God provides that you're not already for it. So... Um, I decided to take the ball by the horns, really, and see how it goes. And so I really enjoyed working as a Forbes correspondent for Ghana. Um, but when the lady who was originally the West African correspondent um, went into her own business venture, an opportunity came up. Um, I wasn't aware of it. I was actually in Ghana. Um, and it was a funny turn of events. Um, it was the June the 3rd floods, basically. And I had ended up in a really bad accident. Um, so I'm in my hospital bed as a result of being really, really injured from the floods. And they asked me, look, peace, we need a peace on the June the 3rd floods. And I'm in my hospital bed and I thought, you know what, I'm a firm believer of if you have an opportunity, um, providing you're alive and you're breathing, you put your best foot forward and you do it. So I said, look, I'm going to write this piece from my hospital bed about my experience, which I did do. Um, and when I submitted it, they were really happy with it. Um, and they were like, Peace, you know, have you thought of actually covering the West African region? Is this something that you'd be willing to do? I'm a firm believer of you take any opportunity that comes and you find your way when you are in there. Um, I had just been now qualified. Um, and it was really the job of a lifetime, I felt, at that stage in my life where I knew I was passionate about media. Um, I was enjoying my, my TV personality. Um, role where I'm having two TV shows, I'm doing this big talent show in Ghana. It was such an exciting time for me in my life. But I think it made me rethink things. The accident made me think about what I wanted to do long term. Um, and when they offered me this job role, I thought, I'm going to do it. I'm going to take it with both hands and I'm going to give it the best shot I've ever done in my life. And by God's grace, I mean, I was worried about not being on TV um, because that was my original passion. But I believe all things work out to your greater good. So um, from that experience, um, they then came up with the concept of My Worst Day, um, which was where we interviewed captains of industries. And that was mind blowing. It was literally a dream come true. I now could get to write um, as a journalist, but also have this TV platform where we are celebrating amazing success stories. So I think all in all, um, being able to write for a publication like Forbes that I admire so much um, was a huge, huge experience. But even more so, the fact that we managed to make a media platform from this. I just felt like, you know, God really, God really did some amazing things, um, and I was really excited about it. Um, I'd have to say, if I'm looking at uh, my career so far as a journalist, one of the, um, the pieces that meant the most to me was the Ghana floods. The reason being was 
obviously it was a really awful time in my life. I didn't really know what was going to happen. Um, it was a very bad accident on my back and I was in hospital. We didn't really know if I'm going to be okay, if I'm going to be able to walk. We didn't really know what the outcome of the opera, the accident and then the operation that I had as, well, as a result would have. So to be able to write the story in that condition um, really taught me something. It really showed me what happens when you don't give up because I really wanted to give up on everything at that point. Um, and I wrote the story, submitted it, and I didn't know that it would open the door to this opportunity. Um, and sometimes it showed me more than anything that sometimes you don't see the full picture, you only see the first step. And it's your ability to really take that first bold move and just trust God with the rest. And I feel that that's what that story always represents to me, so it'll always be my favorite piece that I've written for them so far. Um, I always believe that in terms of inspiration, that's something that I love doing, um, but I don't really know the effect it has. I think that I'm someone who's very outspoken and you know, growing up, I've never really been that outspoken. I was very timid and I was very introverted. And I felt like, you know, you shouldn't really say your opinions and just be, just work and not really rock the boat at all. And I've noticed that um, for me, as I've grown up and as I've matured, become an adult, I've become more confident in myself. Um, I've realized that there's a power in just being yourself, speaking your mind. Um, and you never really know the impact it has by you just being unapologetically you. Nobody's perfect, I have so much to learn. But by being able to document my experiences on the continent, my experiences taking a big leap of faith in my career and my life, I've been able to just write really my thoughts and my opinions, whether it's about love, relationships, or even now, um, entrepreneurs. But one thing that, um, for me, I always say is, I don't believe in working for applause. I don't believe in working for um, credit. You have to do it because you have a passion. You have to do it because it's something that you believe in. Um, and the rest will come. So for me, I never really see myself as an inspiration. I don't think I'm anywhere there yet in my life. Um, I have people that inspire me, but I don't believe that I'm at that level yet to be an inspiration to anyone. But I do believe that by you following the path that you feel that God has for you, and by being unapologetic in who you are, whether you realize it or not, there are people that will see it and it will influence them in some way, shape or form. And that's for me what inspiration is all about. Um, so that's the journey that I'm on at the moment. I'm usually asked, you know, who do I look up to? Who do I aspire to be within the media industry? And to be honest, I always have the same answer. Um, I love and respect so many women that are doing remarkable things in the media space, but I actually don't have an aspiration to be like anyone. Um, I'm usually asked, you know, who do you look up to in the industry or who do you aspire to be like? And one of the things that I always say is I admire the fact that there's so many women right now that are stepping out and doing their thing. Um, they're making a mark, they're making themselves known in the industry by just being themselves. And for me, that always inspires me. However, when I look at a singular person or um, a few women or men even that I would like to be like, I can't find one. And the reason being is because I believe that we are all created differently. There's nobody that I want to be like other than the best person God has made me to be. Um, I look at other people's brands and I think, oh wow, I love how she did this, or I love how he did this. But it inspires me to find my own way and find my own path. Um, sometimes if you follow others or you look at other people's path, it may make you feel like you're in competition with them or you may end up losing out what makes or you may end up losing out on what makes you uniquely you so i feel that it's there's nothing wrong with being inspired by other people but in terms of my aspirations and what i want to see in my life and in my career i really want to just be the best i can be um, it's a really scary journey it's a totally different um, set of skills that i've been using but one thing I will say is God is doing amazing things and I don't want to limit it to someone else's journey. I want to see the best he can do with me. So Aim High Africa started three years ago. Um, I was a teacher in the UK for a very long period of time. Um, and when I relocated back to Ghana originally, um, I always wanted to do more. I didn't really want to leave my teaching skills and experiences completely by the, si the roadside. So I decided um, I want to make an impact. I want to make an impact through education, but also through entrepreneurship, because I was about to now embark on my own entrepreneurial journey. Um, so Aim High Africa really started 
by me going to the marketplaces. I have a love for African print. Um, and I went to a marketplace in Ghana called Makala Market. And I was just literally going to look for materials. Um, when I was going around, I saw some young girls who were carrying loads on their head. They're called kayos in Ghana. I'm not sure what they would be called in Nigeria. Um, and it really struck me, like the, the weights that these young girls were carrying was on another level. Um, and I took a few of them and I sat down and just started talking to them and finding out why are you doing this? What type of environment are you from? What, what is going on? Why are you subjecting yourself to this? Um, and they explained to me and they took me into their world and showed me what they went through. And I felt like there has to be more. There has to be more that can be done. Um, and that's really the moment that Aim High Africa became a reality. Um, I started going to the marketplaces. I would acquire a group of girls. I would cover their wages for the day or the week. And I would start teaching them different subjects. Um, it got to a point where a lot of people started hearing this, hey, we don't have to work for the day. This girl will cover our fees. So <laughs> they started coming in their numbers. And I realized I couldn't really do this on my own. So I started getting a team. And we started saying, look, let's start training these girls, not only basic education that they don't have access to, but let's find a way of making the existing jobs become more profitable for them so they can sustain what they're already doing. Because the model of me giving them money every week or every month was not really working out, especially for me, because I'm giving them my salary, and that's not really sustainable. Um, so we started a process where we would teach them. We would teach them how to improve their businesses. So if you're a Kayo for a day and you're only earning five cities, how can we position her business so that she's actually earning a lot more? Um, and over time, we found that the models that we were using and employing and investing in started becoming very profitable. These young girls were actually generating their own wages and they were able to survive on a lot more money per week and per month, which was inevitably changing not only their lives, but the lives of people in their communities because they were now being able to pay for even their little brother's healthcare or education. So we thought, this is something. I feel that like we stumbled on something. Um, so that's where Aim Higher then became a much bigger brand. Um, we started going into schools and showing young people who weren't really sure what they wanted to do with their life, um, how they could be more, how they could follow their passion and turn it into a paycheck. Um, and we started doing that in schools. We started improving and increasing our um, base of young entrepreneurs that were at the grassroots level. And in turn, we started developing an ecosystem of entrepreneurs in Ghana that wouldn't normally have access to any help, um, but now they were able to make an impact. They were able to um, change their existing situation just by getting a bit of help, that bit of push, that bit of guidance. And we've been doing it now for three years. We've managed to create at least 500 businesses, and that's had a knock-on effect of how many jobs we've been able to provide. Um, the beauty of the Aim High Africa model really is to empower the individual to be able to survive on their own. So we don't hold on to them, but we keep them for a period of time and then we let them go back into their environment. They can always come back to us if they need any help, um, but for the most part it's to help them be empowered so they can survive on their, their own. Um, and we've done that for quite a while. I'm now in Nigeria, so by God's grace we're looking at actually starting it in Nigeria. Um, and that's really the next chapter for Aim High Africa. I think the media industry in Ghana and the media industry in Nigeria are very diverse. Um, there are some remarkably talented people in both pools, but I think obviously because of the population of Nigeria, it's a lot more bigger than media industry. Um, you have a lot more stakeholders that are part of it. Um, and as a result, there's a lot more systems and structures in place in contrast to Ghana. Um, however, what I love about it is both um, countries are really actively pushing to put the media industry not only on the map but to create an actual industry that is globally recognized and respected. Um, so for me I think I tend to not focus so much on the differences but I focus on what unifies us and that is there's a group of people that are actively creating something from scratch and they're doing an amazing job at it. We've got a long way to go there's no doubt about it but I definitely think we're making leaps and bounds in terms of how far we've come. So I was lucky enough to be part of um, MTV Sugar. Um, I did it for a season um, and it was really exciting um, to be able to really um, be part of a big experience, a movement. Um, it's something that is really a big movement that is affecting people's perception on the HIV and AIDS. Um, and for me, what made it really exciting to be part of it is it's an educational platform. 
So to be able to exercise my acting skills um, in that capacity was really, really, really challenging, but it felt so fulfilling. Um, I've watched so many people give me feedback and so many people give MTV feedback about the impact that that movement is making. So it was a really exciting experience for me. I really enjoyed it. Um, my acting skills were definitely challenged, <laughs> um, but I loved it. It was really enjoyable. So I'm really looking forward to the new project with Forbes Women Africa. We're launching our TV show, which is called Against the Odds. And what it does is it profiles captains of industries for women. Um, so women who have really made their mark in their space, in whatever industry it may be. Um, and it's really about celebrating the story of women who have just chosen to not give in um, not relax, not um, rest on um, their image or rest on the perception of what a woman should be, but choose to fight against every single odd to rise, to become a mover, a mover and a shaker really in their space. So it's going to be really exciting. We have some very remarkable women that you don't usually actually hear from um, that share very frank and detailed accounts of what they had to experience to be able to create a change in their space. So I'm super excited about it. It, um, and you should definitely watch out for it. I think in the next five years, I see myself as a slim woman, by God's grace, um, because the ever and stuff is not really working out right now for me. Um, <laughs> but in the next five years, to me, I see myself really on just continuing on the path that I am. Um, the whole reason why I moved back was really I was driven to find out what more I could be. And I never really banked on it going into this direction. There was no amazing strategy or plan. I really just thought I'm gonna work really hard to see how far I can go at being the best I can be. Um, and I prayed like no one's business. I worked hard like as far as I could. Um, and I really just was determined. My five year plan is gonna play out the same way because I felt that my biggest dream when I moved back was actualized a long time ago. And right now I'm just like, Lord, what are you doing? So I don't really have a plan or a strategy, but I know by God's grace that as long as I keep on working hard to be the best I can be um, and not give up, keep pushing myself, keep challenging myself, I believe that the next five years will be very blessed for me, providing I just stick in the gym as well, because this is not working out. <laughs> My advice for young people out there um, who have them role models, their idols, the people they aspire to be like, is there has to come a point where you actually start looking at yourself in the mirror and you start thinking, what makes me, me? What makes me good? What am I good at naturally? Um, what do I enjoy doing? And then embrace that. Sometimes when you look at other people and their paths and the amazing headlines that you're reading, you start believing that I want to be like this person, I want to look like this person, I want to talk like this person, and you lose out on why you were created to be you. So my real advice for young people would be embrace who you are. Um, it may not make sense, um, it may be even a problem, my problem was always talking and now I get paid to do it. So <laughs> your whole weakness sometimes or your whole um, passion that doesn't necessarily fit into your life right now is there for a reason. And if you find a way to embrace it, um, get educated, focus on your books, but also embrace your passion and find out how to make it work for you. That's the best way to achieve your full potential. And if you truly, truly want to go down a path that maybe isn't the conventional route, understand that there's no such thing as shortcuts in life. So even though you're maybe following your passion, it doesn't mean it's going to be easy. In fact, sometimes it's a lot harder than the conventional route. So don't follow shortcuts. Work hard, don't give up, um, and keep pushing. Because as long as you believe that there is greatness in you, it only takes a while, a while for the world to realize it. But you need to keep pushing in spite of every no, in spite of every doubt, in spite of every naysayer. And eventually, you'll get exactly where God has decided for you to be, as long as you invite him into your situation and your journey. My ultimate motto at this stage in my life, because it constantly changes, um, is never underestimate the power of your mind. Um, and the reason why I have that is because you can have so many dreams, so many ambitions, so many goals, and if you trust your mindset, if you apply the right mindset to those visions, to those goals, to those ambitions, you'll be amazed at what you can do. Um, I was a teacher. I was never on social media. I never really was interested in anything 
um, media in terms of myself being in that space, but I was always interested in the media. I just never saw myself in it. And the day I decided to change my mindset and put myself in the place of someone who can do it, that's when everything around me changed. And so for me, I always believe in um, the power of your mindset. If you have the right frame of mind, if you take the right attitude to what your goals and visions are in life, what you're able to achieve is unthinkable, but you need to trust first the power of your mindset. So thank you for watching Alara Supergirl TV. My name is Peace Hyde. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at P-E-A-C underscore H-Y um, and Facebook at Peace Hyde. Um, it's been super awesome. Peace.